Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, I'm joined by the AMA's president, Dr. Susan Bailey, an allergist and immunologist in Fort Worth, Texas, who will be talking about what she learned in a recent conversation with Dr. Peter Marks of the FDA about COVID-19 vaccines. You can view the entire conversation with Dr. Marks on AMA's YouTube channel. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Well, hi, Dr. Bailey. Uh, this is the third time you've talked with Dr. Marks in the past three months, and I would say we've come a really long way since that initial conversation. We now have two authorized vaccines with hopefully more on the way. You know, what did you hear from Dr. Marks in terms of assurances you know, that we can provide physicians so they feel comfortable recommending recommending vaccines to patients and even, of course, getting it themselves? Well, as most everybody knows, Dr. Marks is the head of the FDA's Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. So his responsibility is to make sure that any vaccine uh, is safe and effective. He overviews the review and the regulatory as well as the approval process. And these webinars have been designed to make sure that physicians get all of the information that they need to feel comfortable that COVID vaccines are safe and effective so that they can then convince their patients that these vaccines are safe and effective. And so Dr. Marks talked uh, more about the, the emergency use authorization process as it has been used in vaccines. You know, originally um, the EUA process was established after 9-11, um, uh, for new therapeutics. And so these are really the first times that EUAs have been used for vaccines. But but he described very nicely how this process has what he called cut out the white space in the approval process so that we were able to get these things um, uh, authorized so quickly without compromising safety uh, and streamlining the process. And so he talked about how the EUA standard is really the floor um, for uh, for safety and efficacy. Um, and, but really with these authorizations, they're really functioning more you know, closer to the ceiling. And so the EUA process really is not that different from the standard biologics license application that vaccines have had to apply uh, for in the past, still having done very well designed and executed phase three trials. Yeah, well, given the urgency of the situation, it makes so much sense uh, how they really looked at their process to really maximize efficiencies and not cut corners, uh, but really speed it, uh, speed it to uh, market and to people's arms. You know, you know, given your specialty, um, you know, you often treat people who have severe allergies. Did Dr. Marks provide any guidance that will help you and other physicians determine who should and shouldn't get the vaccines among their patient population? Yes, we had a, a great discussion about that. And as an allergist immunologist, um, drug allergy is definitely, you know, one of the things that I do uh, in my practice and I have for more than 30 years. And and even though we haven't seen many allergic reactions to COVID vaccines, there definitely have been some. And of course, they've been very well publicized. Uh, but he estimates that about one in 100,000, one in 200,000. Um, so when you think back to the size of the trials, we really Really didn't see it much in the trials because it's so infrequent. Uh, these cases are occurringly more often in women, which is kind of interesting. Um, but one of the, I think, incredible things about this whole process, and we've discussed with Dr. Marks with, in previous webinars about looking at international data um, and he said that the international data on reactions, um, they've the FDA has been able to pool its data with other countries, which has been incredibly valuable. There's a really great international uh, collaboration going on, um, including the CDC. And so they've got really good surveillance coming in to follow these reactions. So what they're recommending now is that individuals that have a known history of severe reactions to any component of the vaccine not get one of the mRNA vaccines. And so we don't really yet know what the actual allergen is, but we suspect it's either a polyethylene glycol or PEG, P-E-G, um, which is an ingredient that is found in some laxatives, uh, in bowel preps. Uh, it's an inert uh, substance, but uh, evidently is definitely allergenic. I've seen one case of PEG anaphylaxis in my 30 plus years of practice. 
Uh, and polysorbate 80 is another possibility. Now that one is found in a number of injectable medications. And so there's lots of work going on right now to to figure out uh, exactly what it is in these vaccines that's causing reactions. Uh, but overall, they appear to be incredibly safe. That's great news. Uh, in terms of kind of the side effects, there's been a lot of talk about this. What, you know, what do we know about them and what should physicians be telling their patients uh, and setting those expectations? Well, the good news, the side effects of uh, for the most part are very mild, maybe moderate, but it's very important for physicians to discuss this with their patients because um, many patients are having more trouble after the second vaccine than after the first. So patients need to be prepared for this. And it's the kind of a thing that we see after, have seen after flu vaccines, you know, feeling achy, uh, maybe a fever, uh, very tired, um, maybe some joint aches, chills, headache. Um, and this tends to come on maybe, you know, 12 or so hours after, the, especially the second vaccination, but typically after a day, it's gone. Uh, but patients really need to be prepared for this, maybe um, plan to have their schedule not be quite so uh, busy the day after vaccine, just in case they might need to, to rest for a day. But then recovery is complete. Um, and um, we're just not seeing unusual side effects happening after that initial reaction period. Yeah, that's a great perspective. Um, there's been a lot of talk about variants lately and whether or not the vaccines are going to be effective against them. Was Dr. Marks able to reassure us on that? Yes, we, we talked about the new variants that have, have uh, that have been popping up, and he said that he believes that the mRNA vaccines that are currently in use should be effective against the variants um, that are coming out. We kind of need to stay tuned. Um, and so I asked, I said, okay, well, if we do need to revise the vaccines, how long is that going to take? Because uh, I thought, well, are we going to have to go through a whole nother, you know, eight to 10 month clinical trial process in case they need to update the vaccines for new variants. And the good news is that he said no, uh, that that type of update can be done much more quickly, maybe with clinical trials with only a few hundred people maybe, as opposed to thousands, because they'd still be using the same vaccine platform, the same ingredients, you know, everything would be the same. So uh, all that still remains to be seen, but that made me feel good that if we do have to update the vaccine, that it won't take as long as the initial one did. Yeah, that is very encouraging. Um, did he talk about uh, new vaccines that are in the pipeline? We've heard about Novavax uh, coming up. You know, are we expecting any other authorization soon? Yes, there are uh, two vaccines that are pretty close, um, although he wouldn't give us a date. I asked him when the next advisory panel meeting was going to be, and he goes, oh, stay tuned. But the, we've got two vaccines that are not mRNA vaccines. These are actually uh, viral vector vaccines um, that are different types of viruses that have the spike protein incorporated so that they can sneak them in that way. But the these viruses don't cause infection, so they're very safe. So that's the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine that we've heard about is uh, a viral vector vaccine, as is the, the Johnson Johnson Janssen vaccine. And we're hoping that we'll get information on those very soon. Um, and actually, while we were in the webinar Friday afternoon, uh, Johnson & Johnson announced that its single dose vaccine, which is very cool, um, was very effective, 72% um, efficacy, and that we would um, be getting data on that soon. And so I said, well, okay, we know we've seen some of that evidence and the media is already saying, okay, well, these vaccines are a failure because they don't work as well as the incredibly effective mRNA vaccines. And he said, let's all take a deep breath. Um, really, um, we were gonna be happy at 50% effectiveness, 70% efficacy is still really good. And, uh, and this is not data that has been su submitted to the FDA yet. This is press release data. So we need to take a look at the actual data. Uh, you know, we don't want anybody to think that they're getting an inferior vaccine, uh, but we need every tool in our tool chest to help get us to herd immunity and get past this. 
Yeah, that is an excellent point. And uh, I'll, I'll ask the same question that I do after uh, after your talk at each of these webinars. You know, if there's one thing that you're going to take away from your discussion with Dr. Marks, what you know, what is that key message for physicians? I think the key message for physicians is that the mRNA vaccines appear to be incredibly safe and well tolerated. Uh, that was very concerning to me and I know many of my colleagues very early on when we heard about this new vaccine technology that had not been in widespread use. Many of us were afraid that that we would have weird reactions to it and that's not happening. Uh, it seems to be very typical uh, type of of a vaccine reaction, maybe flu-like feeling uh, more often after the second dose than the first one. Older people are less likely to have reactions than younger people, which I thought was kind of interesting. But the fact that we have come so far in such a short period of time and are seeing such success to me is just absolutely amazing. It is amazing. And thank you so much for these continuing, the continuing series of webinars. I think they're really valuable and uh, what a great chance for our viewers out there to hear directly from Dr. Marks. Uh, that concludes today's COVID-19 update. Uh, there was a lot covered in the important webinar uh, that we didn't have a chance to discuss today, including what messages are most effective in talking to your patients about COVID vaccines. So to view the whole webinar, visit AMA's YouTube channel and check out the AMA site and our resources on COVID-19 at ama as sn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe. Be well.